Hi everyone. So my hope today is to talk you through a little bit of Photoshop uh, and show you some different photos, make some edits on them, and hopefully in the process make you more familiar with various tools. Uh, whether you're editing a horse that you bring in and maybe touching up some shavings or the mane or, or uh, anything of that nature, uh, we're going to walk through a handful of kind of exercises with a class set of photos that you guys can download and do with me um, that will allow you to start to use some selection tools, some of the content aware stuff. Uh, whether that's a fill or a patch tool or a healing brush to the non-content aware, kind of the classic uh, cloning stamp, uh, really still a, a cool tool in itself. Um, and then maybe we'll use some other um, tools such as a, a color replacement, uh, sky replacement, et cetera, and kind of see what we can do. Um, and so I pulled these photos into Photoshop already. You can do the same. I just opened Photoshop Creative Cloud. Uh, I went to File and Open, or you can do Open on the first page. Uh, and then I've just got a class Photoshop edit set. I just hit Control A, selected all of them, uh, and brought them all in at once. Okay. Now, Photoshop's not great with this. It's not a database uh, program kind of like Lightroom is, where you have the large film strip down at the bottom, uh, and you can easily work through all your photos. But you can see I've got them all listed up top here. And so you can see you can take them and you can reorder them uh, in any way that you want. And so if you wanted to do you know, this photo right here after the other one you can take and you could swap these two uh, and change the order of them. Uh, but they're all listed up top here. And so we're going to take them and just kind of work our way through, uh, make some edits on them and kind of show you how you might be able to make some changes. And hopefully by the end of this exercise, uh, you're getting a bit more familiar and comfortable with working in Photoshop. It can be a little bit daunting. Uh, Photoshop is not nearly as intuitive as Lightroom is. Lightroom, you can go in and start playing with some sliders and moving things around and start to figure it out. Photoshop, uh, again, it's not known for the, the most user-friendly interface. All your tools uh, over here, remembering this bottom right arrow tells you that there's additional tools to each one of these, okay? You hold down and you get three more tools here. You know, you hold down on this one and there's another uh, additional set, okay? Uh, and so it all depends uh, what you're trying to find. It might not be uh, readily viewable uh, on this toolbar, okay? And so let's go ahead and dive into this first uh, photo that we have. What I want you to do with this is basically swap out the background. Um, and so here we've got just a, a concrete wall, doesn't look like much. Uh, and we're gonna just put this horse that is right here in that view, okay? Just to play around, play with some selection tools. Now, I don't want anything behind it. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, make this background layer. So you can see it's locked right now. Um, I'm going to make this unlocked and just a separate layer in itself because I want to be able to stack layers. That's what's so cool about Photoshop. I could have layers on top. I could put text on an additional layer, a layer mask. Uh, and so I'm just going to double click on it. And if I double click on it, you can see it wants to make it layer zero. That's fine. Um, and now it's a layer in itself. Okay. And so I'm going to select the area in these windows. Uh, you could try to do it with a quick selection tool. Um, you could try to do it with a number of different things. Um, but probably the easiest uh, is going to be, again, we'd come over here, and this was what typically is showing as your lasso tool. But if I just did a lasso tool, man, I got to draw a perfectly straight line, especially me with a mouse right now. Um, that's not probably going to happen, okay? Control D, deselect. Um, and so we're going to come over here. And I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. And this is cool because I can pretty much snap to straight lines. Now, I can start off of the canvas if I would like, uh, and that might allow me to make sure I get the entire selection. And so I can just come in here and say, oh, we're going to go to about here. And then I can click. And you can see I can just kind of change the shape around to wherever I want. And then we'll just connect back, making sure that we have our entire selection. From here, I can just hit delete, okay? Uh, and then when you see the little grid of the kind of the checkered pattern of the white and gray squares, that's just telling you that uh, it's a transparent background now. It's essentially seen through to the layer that's behind it. Now, right now, I don't have any other layer behind it, do I? But you can imagine when we start to put another layer of a horse back there, um, easily that will kind of shine through in that, okay? And so pretty easy to uh, be able to accomplish. But again, good little exercise. So delete, now that's all transparent. We come over here with our polygonal lasso tool, do our last little area. And then we'll come up here. We'll leave a little bit of it on. If you want to take it all off all the way to the corner, you can. 
Um, but I'm just going to remove it to that control D removes it selection. So you can see it now sees through that window. Now, all I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the move tool. Um, I'm going to take this horse right here and I'm just going to drag it up to this picture and then I'm going to go on top and just let go. Okay. And so now you can see horses on top. It's also pretty big. Okay. We're on the move tool, tool still. We can go to show transform control. Okay. And so even when this sits off of the page, we can now take this and scale it a little bit more to size. Okay. Um, and so that's just, uh, again, to make it a little bit easier for us to be able to see this uh, in the background. We know it needs to be at least as wide as our door, otherwise we're going to uh, see white. Um, but it's still sitting on top, doesn't look quite right, right? And so we could take this and basically layers show up in the way that they're stacked. Um, and so you could hit the, the green check mark up there that would confirm or basically clicking off did the same thing. Um, and so from here we can go on to if we went back to layer one, again, we could take this and move it anywhere we want, um, but we can still go back and reorder these layers. And by doing that, now all of a sudden I put layer one behind layer zero. Now I can still select layer one and move it as it's kind of behind that image, okay? Um, and so now we could say, oh, I want it uh, here or here. You have a little bit of movement before you all of a sudden see some transparency. Um, but you can kind of get the idea of uh, having it now behind, okay? Let's say you wanted to maybe have this horse facing the other direction. Um, and if you did, um, we could simply just go back to where we grabbed it, and we could go to image, image rotation, flip canvas horizontally, and you see now we flipped this horse in the other direction. So we could go back to our first one if we wanted to. We could just hit layer one, delete. That's gone now that we flipped this canvas. We can then go back and drag it on top again, okay? Now you can see it's in the opposite orientation. Show transform, take this, resize it however you see fit. We'll put it all somewhere in there. We can always resize it again later. Here's a little check mark, and then we're gonna drag this to behind, okay? Um, I happen to like it, uh, you can undo the transform box. I happen to like it a lot more on this side than I do on the other side, okay? I might take this, make them a little smaller. We got some room to bring them back. Um, and again, you can now see this horse on the other side of uh, the stall. And so all we have to do is go back to move. And then it's basically selected. We'll undo that transform box. Uh, and now we've achieved what we were going for. Uh, and again, you can do lots of other modifications, but I just wanted you to practice in this layers concept um, of having them stacked, uh, where again, you have one on top of the other and we put, say, this horse back behind this window, okay? And all of a sudden you can see as it moves around, okay? So with that, let's move on to our next photo, okay? And so this was our horse. We'll leave that alone. Here we had this full, okay? Now, you could make adjustments in Lightroom, lighten it up a little bit, remove some of the shadows first, uh, and then bring some things in. Um, but we're just going to make some adjustments to this with a spot healing brush. Uh, and so that's what this is right here. These are content aware tools. And so you have the spot healing brush, healing brush, patch tool, content aware move. Um, these are all kind of lumped together. The content aware features of Photoshop these days are amazing. Um, and so right now we've only got this on one layer, so we don't need to worry about sampling all layers. And then we've got this in terms of type on content aware. Now I've got my brush on a soft round. I like soft round better. You can see how small it is. That's when you have these crosshairs like that. The brush is so small, it's not gonna do anything. So I'm gonna use my brackets, like I've shown you the shortcut before, um, and just simply make it uh, a little bit larger, okay? Now, to pull in a little bit, I wanna see a little bit more of this horse. I'm gonna just hit Control Plus, and then I'm going to zoom in. Now, I don't like to have my spot healing brush much bigger than I need to be. If you make it way too large, you're probably gonna to start to see some anomalies, okay, or kind of irregularity, and so and how it touches up. But all I have to do is essentially click over top, and then it does a pretty dang good job, okay? Now, it might not be perfect, but we can kind of go along this and just simply touch up little areas right on top, okay? Um, and so, depending on, you can take this and drag across it even, uh, and see how it touches up that little area. 
um, it does a pretty dang good job. You know, you watch the curvature of that muscling right there, uh, and it matches about everything, okay? Uh, we could take this, go a hair bigger, and try it. If it doesn't work out, the worst thing you do is you hit Control Z, uh, and you go back to square one. I'm okay with all that, okay? Um, and then, uh, again, we see a little spot here. Maybe I don't like quite that and what it did. I'd go a little smaller. We could always try something else. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm going to try to stay off that curve right there. And we'll go a little bigger. Sometimes it might take a, a little bit to uh, kind of finesse and figure out where you want it. We're just taking some of these little blemishes off. Make it a little smaller. Again, the smaller you can have it, the better. Okay, the less noticeable it's going to be. We might take this as a tough one a little bit. Did a pretty good job. And this is what content aware spot removing does. Now, back in the day, we would have had to use the clone stamp. Um, and again, the clone stamp works, but it's just mimicking one other place. Okay. Uh, and so, content aware technology does much, much better. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, they forgot to, to brush this full and do this all beforehand, but it's amazing. Um, you can see the texture uh, practically uh, and unparalleled unnoticed. Uh, and so I'm pretty happy with how much we've uh, touched this up so far. Uh, if you see some other blemishes, uh, you can easily take those out. Uh, but I think all in all, most of those mud spots, um, we can zoom back out now, I'd say are removed and gone. Um, and so, and that's just using the, the spot healing, okay? We'll use the, the patch or some content to wear fill a little bit later, but for just removing shavings, little blemishes like that, uh, that is an excellent tool, and I really, really do value that one, okay? And so hopefully you're starting to see how cool some of the content to wear technology is. So here we've got a picture that uh, I just want to remove the power lines. And there's a couple ways you might be able to do this. Uh, but in this case, the, the spot healing stuff, the content to wear stuff might not work that well. Uh, and so I might go back to an old school method. I take a spot healing brush on the top of this and what happens? It's thinking, it doesn't get rid of it. Look, it's still there, okay? And so it doesn't always do a perfect job, okay? So sometimes you have to go back to your old school techniques, okay? And so we'll put that back originally how it was. I'm going to revert back to our old school friend of the clone stamp in this case. Um, and so I can see a little it's faint, little power line here, not much underneath, mainly this column. And then I've got power line here, little bit here, and then I got some through here that I'm going to try to remove. Okay. Now the clone stamp, you remember, it is going to sample an area. We use Alt um, to essentially sample. Um, and then, uh, or I believe it's Option on a Mac. Uh, and then uh, from there, once you pick an area to sample, it is going to do that same area. So when I start going over top of something, you can see my crosshair now, and it's sampling directly above, let's say, okay? Um, and so by doing so, um, we can then take and mimic, but sometimes you get repetitive patterns that you have to be careful. And so a lot of times you have to keep sampling in different areas or the same area sometimes might keep things, you know, the similar height as the sky starts to change, okay? Um, we'll take this, and again, I'm just gonna keep sampling different areas, and then I'm gonna say, hey, I want this to be pretty close to that. And then we'll come back over here, about to there. And then I'm just gonna start to get rid of, I'm gonna go just above that line. we start to get into some clouds. I'm just gonna go trail right behind the clouds and use that to, if I don't like something, Control Z, just undoes that, not a big deal. And then we can trail behind. We'll just, again, start to remove a little bit of that power line, okay? Um, mountains here, we can come back and do our column in a bit. I might even just kind of touch over top of it just a little bit okay it doesn't take much and then again we can always decrease the size of this and our power line is pretty small that may help us a little bit 
sample back here. You can see we've done a pretty good job there. Let's sample in the trees and then start to remove some of that. We could sample in here. To the point where you probably can't even tell there was a power line there before, right? I'm not seeing much else in there. Um, let's go back to our main column. Again, I'm going to sample. Let's start to sample up here. Let's see. This will allow us to put a little bit of that cloud back. And be careful to get that repetitive pattern sometimes. We just sample again. We'll sample right there. I just keep my finger on alt and uh, we keep playing with some stuff. And again, you can always come back with the spot healing brush afterwards if you feel like you need to do some additional touch up. So far, I'm pretty happy. We don't have much remaining because we got a little bit on top of this helmet. I'm going to zoom in just to get a closer look. Um, right here, I'm going to keep this in cloud. And then I'm going to go even smaller and we're going to sample here. You can see if I then go up to the cloud, it matches that. And then we might go to a, a hard brush or we could probably for the sake of this and learning, uh, we could probably leave it at that. If we went hard, we could probably curvature over that uh, a little bit better with uh, the line. Um, but uh, again, it just depends how uh, precise you want to get. Uh, if we zoom back out, um, we'll put it full frame here. Uh, you really can't tell there were ever power lines there. Okay, We fixed the trees, the mountains, the entire column, everything going back here. If you still see something, continue to touch it up. Um, but I would say as a by and large, we took out majority of those power lines that were there. Okay. Um, and it might take a number of different processes. It just depends. Uh, but the clone stamp that was not content aware is still a really, really good tool. Uh, and I use it quite frequently. Okay. And so we've taken this, we switched out our background. Um, we took our little foal, we used a spot healing brush. Now we've used the clone stamp, taken out some power lines. What else awaits? Okay. This, I just want you to take and we're going to put the foal's head right here. Um, just as something to play around with. Now, I want you to select the entire full as it sits here, actually, not just the head. You could do this, again, a couple ways. You could come over to Quick Selection Tool, and you could, could try to, we can make this a little bigger uh, with our brackets. Um, and again, you could take this and try to select the entire full and go around and do it all that way. And that's pretty appropriate. You see it snaps out all of a sudden. Uh, if it does that, again, you've got to take Alt, hit negative, and then go back and snap it back to. Um, and so that's a perfectly acceptable way. There's a couple ways you could go about doing this. You can see it picks up on the color difference. And so, again, we can easily push out and then come up. And for the most part, we've got the, the decent selection of that full right there. And so that's one method, okay? We could take control D, okay? The other method we could select by color range, okay? And I could do the opposite, right? The easiest color right here is everything that's pretty solid black, okay? Um, and so I'm gonna come in here and say, you know, I want all of that to essentially be removed. Now you can invert here or you can invert your selection later, okay? And so then I can click okay. And then now, my foal is going to be selected. Now, I don't want the eye and all these other areas to be removed. So I'm still on the uh, quick selection tool. All I have to do is hit Alt, which brings up the negative, And then I can take, actually, we'll do the other. We want it part of our selection. And then we're just going to remove all of those little marching ants. OK, you can come up here, do the same, this ear, that ear. Okay, and it did a lot better selection if you notice around the hair. Okay, uh, and it might have captured some of those eyelashes. I might leave it and try. In this case, I don't want that RMB, so here I will hit my Alt uh, and then I will take that out of my selection. Okay, now we could see how good of a job it does. You can also always go to Select and Mask 
and then you can try to refine the edge a little bit, okay? Do more of a, a smart radius on here, um, and then from this, allow it maybe just a little bit to smooth that out over uh, the full, okay? Uh, and this may allow you to uh, just ever so slightly um, come in here and uh, again, make some changes uh, to that. Um, and so, I don't think it's gonna let me. Hiding behind this, if it will let me. I can't get to the uh, OK button. And so we can take this and basically just feather it out a little bit. Um, and then I've had to pull this out and then we'll just click OK. And then from here, you can see it just maybe slightly changes that uh, selection. And so all we're gonna do, much like we did with the horse in the beginning, we're just gonna take this and for fun, pull it over to this, okay? And now we've got our horse on top of this layer, okay? Did pull quite a bit of eyelashes, which are cool. You would have never been able to probably select those before. Um, we can take this, and again, you get the bounding box that's quite large. Um, we can then start to resize this, bring it down to the appropriate size that we want uh, and stick it into our photo. You wanna play around, let's confirm that. Um, and then we're gonna undo show about transform box. And then you can always change the opacity. You wanna play around with something. We can make this somewhat see-through, okay? Uh, that's what I've done in the example with you, uh, just to kind of show you different things. You know, we had this fold that was at the, you know, inspection, and then we branded that, et cetera, um, and it passed with whatever. And so, again, you could play around with different things that you're trying to achieve, but that was just selection by a couple different methods. Color range is a cool selection to be able to do them. And color range selection probably got more than that quick selection tool would have allowed you. And then we brought it over, and again, you might change the opacity on it. You can still take, select whatever layer you want, move it around your photograph, but again, that's the cool thing of layers. We've got all its whiskers and everything else that's showing. And so I like that. I'm gonna leave this photo as is now, okay? There was our full, Control D, deselect, and then let's move on. Here's an easy one, okay? Um, this is a, a cool one that I'm gonna take, and the one thing I want you to do with this photo is, I like this full a lot, but I don't want mom's head in here. I think this photo is gonna be better without mom's head, but you know what, it was there. Uh, and so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take just the lasso tool, okay? Now I'm on a freehand selection, okay? And so I'm gonna go around and make sure I get all mom's whiskers, right? And so I'm gonna go around here and then I'm off the canvas a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back to select. Uh, and then I'm just gonna hit delete. And then when I hit delete, I can basically tell it content aware, okay? And color adaptation. And so it's gonna fill. You can also go to image and then do a uh, content aware fill, but just by hitting delete, uh, it's gonna go fill, uh, content aware, click okay. Uh, and then let's watch it. And so it's gonna take a minute, it's looking at the background. Um, and most of the time, uh, just a simple delete and a fill like this uh, is gonna do pretty dang well, okay? Uh, and so I bet you we won't have to do much in the way of a touch up um, after this. Again, these content aware tools and the technology associated is pretty dang cool, okay? And so look, mom's gone. So control D, I don't see anything anymore, okay? If you still said, oh, there's a little whisker there or something like that, you could come in with your little spot healing brush um, and you could start to, you know, touch something up if you still saw a blemish anywhere. Um, but I don't see any, okay? I think mom's completely gone um, and we're just left with our fold that we wanted. Again, you see any blemishes on the fold, you can go in and still touch it up with your spot healing brush. Uh, but our main objective was to take out uh, that mare's muzzle that was sitting in there. Sure, there's a couple ways you could do it, but a content to wear fill uh, is probably the easiest, okay? Now, because I'm on still the background locked, it did the fill. Had I changed this to layer zero and I hit delete like before, uh, it would have pulled it out to a transparent layer, okay? Uh, and so again, you can always come in here and then under edit, you would see content to wear fill. Uh, we could also do that if it was selected, okay? So we're done there. This one, you could probably guess, we're still on our spot healing brush. I just want you to remove all of the shavings that are here, okay? You got quite a few. Now keep this spot healing brush as small as you possibly can. Um, and again, that's gonna make things a lot better uh, in terms of uh, blending with your surrounding backgrounds. And I just want it big enough that it encompasses some of these shavings. 
and nothing more, okay? And then that will really, again, help things to blend. You make this too large, and all of a sudden it's the size of the foal's head. Well, think about it. It's not going to do a very good job of blending everything together, okay? And so we're just doing some minor little shavings that are remaining. If I wanted this piece of hair gone, I should be able to just go like that. And then what do you know? A piece of hair is gone. Same with this one. We'll try that. Gone. Okay. And so I'm pretty happy with the head. You might do just a little bit right there. Uh, everything looks good. I've got this little piece right here that I might try to remove. Okay. I'm okay with that. Again, you always want something a little bit different. You could always go back to your classic uh, clone stamp uh, and then we could try with uh, that to remove something um, but for right now I think what we've done with our spot healing brush uh, has done just fine okay we'll take some of those make those blend in it's amazing the texture the color the shadows the highlights that are present in that area uh, man it mimics them near perfect sometimes okay um, and so with that, I think we're pretty well done okay, with this photo right here. And so we've taken a lot of these blemishes off. We've cleaned them up. Sure, we wish this photo didn't have shavings on them before, uh, but it did. And so we've pretty well touched that up uh, and removed that. Okay, let's go to our next. Okay, so now we've got a photo here that uh, I just want to extend the canvas for. We're doing uh, a bit of a brochure and I need this photo to be a little bit wider than it is right now. So there's a couple ways you could do this. You could try to do a content aware scale. Um, and basically do a quick mask over top of the horse right here. Just toggle Q, it would select this area, uh, and then you could try to protect that, make it an alpha channel uh, and protect that. Um, or I'm gonna do the easy way, okay? Um, and the easy way with content to wear right off the bat um, is we're just gonna take this, we're gonna go to canvas size, and again, I just want it, I need it two inches wider on the left. So we're gonna go to inches at 16.373 right now. We're just going to make that at 18, but I need this side to stay anchored. I only want the white space on the left, okay? And so we'll go ahead and click OK. Now you can see I've got my additional two inches here that will fit my appropriate brochure, okay? Now we could take this and select all the white. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you could do that. We could take the marquee tool uh, and try to get that perfect. I'm going to be a little silly here and just hit color range, select this white right here. Uh, that I, uh, again, know that I want. Um, and then from here, we'll just click OK. And then it's going to select that white. Actually, let's do the inverse of that. Okay, so now I got that selected. You can see it selected the white in these lights right here. Uh, I'm just going to go to the quick selection tool real quick. Uh, just hit Alt. And then I'm just going to remove the selection of all of those lights. Okay. I don't want those in there. Uh, I don't see any other marching ants anywhere. The only thing else should be selected is this white area here. I'm going to go to edit and then I'm going to go to content aware fill now. This is a, a kind of a newer spot that you can go to. Um, and it's going to generate a preview of this. And when you see the preview, it's all white now. It's going to fill that in. It'll likely do a pretty good job. We can do minor touch-ups after with a, a spot healing brush should we want to. Um, but like I said, the content aware tool, look at that. It filled that in um, all the way down to the, the purlins in the roof. Pretty dang accurate. Okay. Uh, and so I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and just click OK. Um, and then it's going to start to make that conversion and fill that area. Uh, and so like I said, content aware fill is a, a pretty remarkable thing. Um, and so again, you could take content aware and do a scale. You could do a fill. You could try to go in and do just the clone stamp um, and do all of that, but it's going to take you a lot longer and likelihood of you making it match near as well as this content aware is done right here uh, is probably slim to none. Uh, and so again, it might take you a good bit of time to try to do it by hand. Uh, but it's, it's a whole lot easier to do these content to wear fills. And so it'll fill that in uh, here momentarily. And then we'll just basically deselect that area. If there's certain spots we want to touch up, um, then we can uh, easily do that 
um, but we're uh, nearly ready to uh, move forward. Takes a little bit to process, takes some RAM, um, only because, uh, again, it's doing a lot of background processes to come up with, uh, again, that fill area. And so uh, here we go. And so it's got that all done. We're going to hit Control D, deselect that. Um, and man, I can't even tell in the arena in here. All the cabinets look fine, all the siding looks fine, and I even have a line that's about the same spacing as this for my purlins. I'm not even going to touch anything, okay? Um, and so we widened this two inches now. Um, Weston, our horse, is the exact same size. We didn't distort him. Had we taken this and just done a, a canvas size increase and tried to stretch it, obviously it would distort uh, our entire horse and the background. Um, and so again, Content Aware Phil did a pretty dang good job. Uh, and so that's one thing you guys can play with. This horse, I'm going to leave it up to you. Maybe you want to touch up some of the snow. Maybe you want to do something else in this photo. Uh, there's a lot of different techniques that you can try. Um, something new I've stumbled upon lately in Photoshop is a sky replacement. Um, you can take and it will try to pick up on the sky in the photo uh, and then convert that over to a number of other options uh, that may exist. Okay. Uh, and again, it's a super cool tool. Um, and so you could come in and try a, a simple sky replacement. You could try to take some of the blemishes out. Um, you can see what that does to just the sky, okay? We could increase the brightness of it. Again, it looks a little bit cooler now, like maybe it's in the, the sunrise. Um, and if you wanted to change the, the temperature, you could, uh, could do so. I like it a little bit more uh, like it was. Um, and then I'm just gonna click okay. Uh, and so again, just by doing that, you can see it stacks it in different layers in terms of replacing the sky right there. Um, but it looks uh, pretty cool. Um, and again, if you can come in and make any other adjustment that you guys uh, feel so. This one uh, be a little trickier. Okay, we're gonna try to remove this shed right here. Now this is probably gonna take uh, a couple of different processes. Um, the first one we might try, and sometimes you try one and it doesn't work as well, we might try the patch tool, okay? We could come in and select around our entire shed that was right here. We got a shadow to take care of a little bit later. Um, but we might take that and just say it needs to be somewhere in that neighborhood, okay? Um, and that's what it's going to come in and do. Um, and so we could then hit uh, Control Z and go back and see what that looked like before. Um, and then if we could always redo patch selection, control D gets rid of it. It's not bad. Uh, we could try a couple of different options. Um, and so we could go uh, back one more um, and look at our selection, uh, undo our uh, site there. We could also hit delete um, and then basically just do a content aware. Uh, and we could see what that comes up with. Uh, and sometimes I'll try different things to see what is going to look more appropriate. We can handle a shadow afterwards. Um, and then this pole is probably going to look a little bit different uh, as well. And so we'll probably need to remove that in uh, one fashion or another. But I, I want the shed gone. Um, and so we're going to figure out the, the best way to, uh, to do that. And so here you can see it's doing its content to wear fill. Do you think this is going to be better or worse than the patch? Let's see, control D. I think I like that better, okay? Um, and so we could take this and if you wanted these bushes to carry over, this is where your clone stamp might come in. Um, and so we'll go to our uh, clone stamp right here. Um, and we might play with a, a number of different things. Um, we can make this uh, quite a bit larger. And maybe I wanna carry on one of these little bushes over here um, to make sure, let's select the bottom corner. Um, just to make sure that um, I kind of carry on the, the same look, more or less, okay? Uh, and so I could put another one of those, and you can see how it is copying that. Uh, and that's all the clone stamp is doing, okay? Um, and so maybe I can blend these areas just a little bit more until it gets off the screen, okay? Uh, and then you can see here, I can pretty easily get rid of let me get a little artifact there, that's fine. Um, I can pretty easily, actually I'm just gonna redo and then take out that uh, spot, because I was happy with my bush. So we'll just sample a new area here, and then come over and just simply fill this in, okay? 
And so we might hit Control or Alt again. It's being slow. Okay. And then we got our little shadow that sat over here. Let's actually take this out. This looks a little odd in there. And you can see the cool thing about it now is it gives you a preview of essentially what's going to overlay, okay? Um, and so here, let's make this a little bit smaller. We just have a little shadow to get rid of, okay? And so I'm gonna come down here now and try to remove some of that shadow. Okay, you can see it comes over here. We can come over to our horse, get pretty close. You can pick any areas you want to try to remove this. Sometimes it just takes a bit of sampling in different areas uh, to be able to kind of blend things as you wish. Usually it doesn't lag quite that much. Um, but for the most part, if you looked at this before and after, our shed is gone. If there's something else you wanted to touch up, you could come back with spot healing brush. Um, you could take out some of these shavings right here. So if we went over to where our patch tool was, hold that down, spot healing, uh, we could come over here make that a little smaller, take out some of these little shavings that are on this horse. Uh, again, that's probably the best tool uh, appropriate for that. Um, and so by doing that, we've taken out our shed um, and the background kind of blends with some more of these bushes that look like they're kind of meant to be. Um, anything else that you wanted to touch up, um, you could uh, again easily do here. We can take it a little bit bigger because again, it's just a, a solid background. Um, and again, if we wanted to try to blend a little more of this, um, we could do so. Okay, so shed is gone. So patch tool worked okay. Content wear fill with some clone stamp turned out to be kind of the best. Okay, so now on this horse, I don't want you to do necessarily anything to the horse unless you want to touch something up, but I want to practice putting on a gradient. Um, basically going to change from white to black or black to white or transparent um, and then also add some text to other tools in Photoshop that we have yet to use. Okay, So right off the bat I'm going to select the gradient tool right here um, and then once we've selected that tool uh, again we're going to have to be sure a couple things. Okay, One is that if we go in here to the basics this would be if you looked over at foreground to background, foreground to transparent uh, and black and white. We want the foreground to transparent, okay? Um, and so we can come over here. Other thing you'd be sure you do, if your colors are off on your palette right here, it's not gonna work. And so hit D, that's going to set them back to a default. Uh, and then we're going to, I want it to be a white uh, background. So if we did it like this, let's just show you. So we could take the line and draw in as we want our gradient to look. And if we let go, you're gonna see it brings black in. I wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to bring white in. And again, we can change how, how much of that comes in. So hit Control Z, real undo that, and then hit X. That will swap these two, okay? Now we pull a line in with our gradient. We're gonna blend this and then watch. So we, now we get some good whites in there, okay? We can then maybe pull one more time a little bit further. Okay, we get a little more white, okay? But you get this nice transition of the white into, uh, again, these mountains and everything else that uh, exist, okay? And so you can play with it as many times as you want over and over, kind of change how much of the picture shows through, how much doesn't. And we're gonna come over here to text, okay? And with text is cool because you have a ton of different fonts. And so I'm gonna go over here and just start uh, typing and then I want another line and I'm gonna go happy holidays 
Um, and so from here, we can take this, we can do a number of different things. I can highlight this text. Um, and now what I've got it highlighted, I'm just going to center it. Um, and it's centered now on top of each other. We can move it around in a second. Um, you can choose to change the color. Um, I've had to manually type in, it might be really small if you select it. I typed in 200. Uh, 200 is probably a good size for you. Uh, if you wanted to um, put a little arc to it, uh, you could do that. Um, let's just show you. So we can take this. Now that's another layer. And so you'll see Happy Holidays over here as additional layer. I can go to the Move tool uh, and then just simply drag this wherever I want. You want to change fonts, go back to the text tool, okay? And all you have to do is select your text right here. You can go to drop down menu. The cool thing is it gives you all kind of a little sample uh, next to it and you could pick any other one that you choose, okay? Um, and so if you wanted to go to another Happy Holidays, now it's too big, you just change the size of your font, okay? Um, and so that's that. Uh, if we wanted to make it arc or something like that, we could go in here and you could see we could take an arc and you'd see happy holidays. We could do an arch um, and you would see it like that. And so there's a lot of different uh, ways that you can uh, portray that uh, happy holidays. I think for this one, I'm just going to leave it at none. And I kind of like the, the classic. And so I'm going to leave this as such. Now I kind of like this uh, happy holidays um, beyond the uh, arch. Um, we could go in and we could put various shadows on things um, and have them appear kind of behind the letters. We could do a lot of different things. But uh, again, I'm going to keep it pretty simple for uh, for this one. So you've added some text. You've added a gradient. Uh, you can make this a, a little postcard for the holidays now uh, and send this off. Okay. What else do we have left? Not much. Okay. And so with this photo, uh, we're going to use a new tool that we haven't touched yet. And that's called the color replacement tool. Uh, and so this is pretty cool. I'm going to take this uh, set of scrubs right here. And I, I just don't like the blue, okay? I want something maybe that's a little more neutral that doesn't uh, pop out next to uh, um, Dr. Hacker right here. Uh, and so one thing we could do um, is we could just simply change this to a more neutral color, like we said. But if we don't use the color replacement tool, and say we were to go in and we were just to use a regular brush, um, and we can go back and take our little eyedropper and we could sample any color in the scene, which is pretty cool. Let's say we use one of these grays right here. Um, but if we went to our brush and it's on something soft, um, but if we start kind of painting over that, sure, we can change the color of the scrubs, but we've lost all the underlying texture. And of course, at this point, it no longer looks natural, right? And so control Z undo. Uh, and so this is where the color replacement tool comes in handy. Okay. And so we'll select that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see more so the scrubs. Okay. That's what we're going to change the color of. And so we've already selected that color. I could also hit alt brings up now the color uh, picker tool. Okay. A little eyedropper uh, when I have the color replacement selected. And so I could come in and say, oh, we want to go up here. Okay. Now, the cool thing is as long as it is in, we can make this even a little bigger, um, as long as it is in with the boundaries of uh, that circle, it will change it, but only what the plus is over top of. And it all sounds confusing. Let's just start changing. And so now I can even come to where the background is, okay, and go all the way around. Whatever color was selected, it will now change. And you can see all the underlying texture is still held. I can even come on top to where... The jacket is and come down it and then get that line as long as my plus stays on the actual scrubs okay and so you can see the same with the white here we haven't touched anything um, that we don't want to so we're changing the entire color of these scrubs okay so that's pretty cool um, we can come in here looks like there's a little spot we missed there and so again I'm gonna just hover right over the border here, making sure our plus stays on. Cool. That looks all pretty good. I'm going to zoom in a little more, and we're going to have to touch up the collar um, and uh, maybe a little, a couple other little areas. We could hit a little bit right in here, maybe. Okay. So let's do this collar now, and you can see again pretty easily. I don't touch skin tones, I don't touch anything else that is not wanted and come in here. And I also want this color right here to be replaced. Okay. And that color. Okay. 
I got a little spot right there. Okay, so let's just double check everything. Looks good all the way down. Okay, still have nice uh, contrast between uh, the scrubs and the vest. And voila. Okay, and so that is the color replacement tool. Again, can't even tell. I've seen people take a photo with balloons in them. They didn't want their balloon to be yellow anymore. They wanted it to be red. And you can just literally replace the color over. It keeps all the highlights, shadows, textures, uh, everything else that may exist. And so that's a new uh, tool that maybe uh, you haven't tried before. Okay. Um, one last photo that we've got for you. Okay. So you've seen this one before. Uh, you can probably guess what we want to do here. You can choose to do other stuff. Maybe you want to take out the lead rope. You're welcome to do that. Uh, my big thing with this is this pole coming out of uh, the top of her head. Okay, I wish I had taken the photo in a different spot, um, but hindsight's always 20 20. And so now we got to remove this pole. Okay. Um, I can tell you what I'm probably going to do, um, but we could try a couple things. And so we might take the patch tool and you could come in here very quickly and select this. But the problem I'm starting to see is the mountains right here at an angle. And so if I took this over top of her, and we could do a better selection later too. But if I took this over top, and now with the patch tool, say I just go to you know slide this way, it's probably not going to do a great job. Um, whereas you know you can see the mountains not matching up anymore. So when I let go, you know Control D, I don't really like the shift and how things are matching up. And so I'm going to hit Control Z. Um, and then I'm gonna hit Control Z one more time. Go back to where our poll was. More often than not, I really do love the content to where fill anymore. But I'm just gonna hit Delete, and then leave it. It says Fill now. Contents, content aware. Click OK. We'll let it run this process. And then if there's things again we don't like, kind of like that shed, uh, we might be able to uh, just simply move forward and touch those up with a spot healing brush, or we could bring in the clone stamp. Uh, or a number of other things, okay? Uh, and so again, there's no one tool that works for everything. Uh, sometimes, again, it's just a little bit of trial and error. And so look at that. I really do like that. So Control D, deselect, and you can't even tell the difference between the sky, the line across the mountains. Look at all that, all the way through the trees. We had a little bit to fix and touch up above her head, um, but man, everything else looks near perfect, and that pole's gone. And so Control Plus a little bit, uh, we can take that and just simply come in here and again, we just have a little bit of touching up. You could do this with, we could try spot healing brush. Uh, if this doesn't work, um, we might just come in with uh, the clone stamp. And again, it just depends on how things are going to uh, play out. Uh, and so that's not bad. Um, Yeah, see if we can't. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't, you know, trial and error. And so, nope. And so, again, it's really not a bad spot right now. We got just a hairline of odd color in here. We could keep going to uh, a finer level um, and we could try to start touch that up. You know, we could come into our clone stamp and we could get this sucker super small, right? And from here, May or may not work. Hit Alt, Sample, and then you know we can start to touch some of that up along the edge. And I'm okay with that. Okay. Sometimes it's just a matter of a few clicks here and there. Some little blemish here, maybe. I don't know if I like. So we might take this, I like this green over here a little bit better, sample this, come over, and then just kind of paint back over this a little bit. Might sample that a little. I like these greens a little more. There's still a little bit of a, a wood color in there. What do you think? I like it. Okay, so all we have to do, control minus, go out, and voila, okay? You can't even tell that there was a pole there before, okay? Uh, Content Aware did a pretty good job itself in the skies, the mountains, and the trees. We just touched up a little bit, obviously, as you might expect, where that met the top of her head. 
um, but that poll never even existed anymore. And so it didn't take us that long on any of these edits, uh, whether it was taking mud off or shavings off, moving a pole in a photo. Um, there's so many different things that we can do. Changing the size of something, color replacement. Uh, all of these photos had horses in them, and you saw some unique and some creative things that we did with each of them. Uh, and so I really do hope you're a little bit more well-informed about Photoshop now. We've gone over basically all the main tools you probably use, lots of different selection tools we use today from Marquee to Polygon Lasso, Freehand Lasso, Quick Selection, Color Range Selection. Uh, we could even go as far as to hit select and go select by subject um, and you know Photoshop anymore is pretty dang good and it's got a lot of cool new tools um, if it selects by subject it's going to now find the horse and this person uh, and select just them okay and look at that it does a pretty dang good job if we wanted to change a little bit say you need know, more of the lead rope in there um, and uh, basically just put your quick selection tool back on here it's on the plus we would add to, so we want the negative. We could come over and just bring that back to our lead rope. Everything else we say, oh, it looks pretty dang good. We could come in here, double click our background if we want, make it layer zero, and then simply hit delete. Um, and all of a sudden that's gone, okay? We could hit control Z and select all of a sudden inverse. And now hit delete and we're left with those two, okay? We could swap them out, put them on a different background brochure, um, anything of that nature, okay? And so your options are, are really endless. But again, like I said, we've used a lot of selection tools, content aware stuff, spot healing, patch, uh, the fill tool, color replacement. Uh, these are probably the bulk of what you guys are really going to utilize in Photoshop. Some text. Uh, if there's anything else we didn't cover that you still want to uh, play with, um, then again, feel free to uh, reach out and I'm happy to walk you through something uh, even one on one. Um, you can take, uh, again, horse leg and move it a little bit with something like the Puppet Warp. But uh, Photoshop is a really, really good asset. Uh, every photo should run through Lightroom and then a handful of these major edits like we've shown you examples of here today. Uh, this is where Photoshop really excels. Okay, And so with that, again, I hope you've learned a, a good bit and uh, we'll talk to you later.